but what made you do that move from just continuing in the commercial sense and then just doing, obviously, the films? Well, I was, as I said to you, I was in the right time in the right place with commercials. Around 91, I started mixing, and uh, and it, it quickly got busy because of the because of the shift that I've spoken about. You know, I, I was doing a great job, but I also honestly believe that I was the young sound mixer available, and that was extremely helpful. Um, I think that, you know, there's a certain amount... We may, Look, we make our own luck, but there's no doubt that there's a certain amount of right time, right place in this industry. And so I got very, very busy on commercials, and during the course of, uh, of me shooting commercials, um, I was on a commercial, and I noticed a runner who I hadn't seen before, but he looked familiar. And I got talking to him, and his name was Guy Ritchie. And mm -hmm. the reason he looked familiar is because we both grew up in West London, and we had friends of friends. We'd, we'd kind of, our paths had crossed in, uh, uh, many times during our teenage years. And, uh, and so, you know, I, I reminded him of this. We kind of, you know, we had, we had a laugh about friends of friends. And, uh, and I asked him what he wanted to do. And he said, oh, I want to be a director. And I was like, mate, everyone wants to be a director. All of these runners want to be a director. Are you sure? And he was like, no, no, no. I don't want to be a director. I'm going to be a director. He was very, very single-minded, extremely confident. And, uh, and I said, well, look, you know, if you ever want any... any if you ever want any help, I desperately want to do drama. I'm, you know, I'm stuck doing commercials. And by the way, commercials were a fantastic living. But I really wanted to, 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 to stretch myself. I wanted challenges, and I wasn't getting audio challenges on commercials. Um, for me, commercials were still all about perfection. I wanted to get perfect audio, but I also started wanting to get perfect audio on five pages of dialogue, seven-handed. Um, which of course was what we did on Lockstock. But anyway, so Guy um, invited me to come and do a short film, and at that point, I was doing every single short film that I possibly could. Um, interestingly, my boom operator on commercials, when I first started mixing commercials, my old man had retired and become a producer, and I said, look, I've been, I've been offered this job mixing that, you know, and he said, what are you going to do about a boom op? And I said, well, I, I don't know, and he said, Listen, you're very, very young to be mixed to be mixing. If you want to be taken seriously, you really need to go to work with a, a very well respected, well known and experienced boom operator. So fortuitously, um, there was a gentleman called David Sutton who had worked with uh, Chris Newman, um, a multiple Academy Award winner Chris Newman from America. David had had an international career. He had he had gone around the world and he was the go-to boom operator. And uh, and he became available because he uh, he reached the end of his uh, of wanting to do features. He got very very sick on a feature. Um, he he'd got a bug in the jungle of South America, and it taken him a while to get over it. You know, but listen, this is a tough business. People get sick. Uh, and, and he came back to, to, to England to rehabilitate himself and, uh, and, and just do some commercials while he was rehabbing. And he very, very kindly agreed to, you know, he was late 40s at that point and had a CV as long as your arm. And uh, he very kindly agreed to come and be my, my boom operator on commercials. Um, but one thing that, you know, he, he didn't want to come and do short films all night Friday night, all night Saturday night, all night Sunday night without putting an invoice in for free. Um, and so when it came to do Guy Ritchie's short film, uh, I didn't even ask David because I knew that he wouldn't appreciate it. And, uh, and I asked an old friend of mine, Arthur, who had desperately wanted to get into the business. And, uh, and he came and he was my boom operator uh, on, on Guy's short film. And it was, his, it was his first job as a boom operator. So we did this film called The Hard Case with Guy. Um, it went really well. It was actually a really exciting movie to do. Um, and at the end of it, Guy came over and said, look, thanks, thanks, Simon, thanks, Arthur. Um, and he said, look, I've had a great time directing this. I, you know, I want to write this into a long version, and I want to shoot a feature. And, uh, and, and Arthur looked really excited. I'd heard that kind of dialogue dozens of times, having been in the business. You know, I'm now 25, and I've been in the business since I'm 16. I'd heard 
I'm going to do a feature a lot of times. <laughs> so we got in the car to drive away. It was an old an old Volvo estate. We had all the gear packed in, an Ersta car, and you could just about fit you know, a small sound package in a Volvo estate. And, uh, and we drove away, and Arthur said, look, this is great. We're going to do a feature with him. And I said, well, you know, Arthur, that might not happen. Don't get your hopes up. And uh, so Arthur comes to work with me with Start Doing Commercials. We're now about two years since we did the hard case for Guy Ritchie. Guy phones me two years later, not a year later. He said he was going to call me a year later and we were going to make a feature film. And I kind of went, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Two years later, he, he, he phoned and I hadn't seen him, heard from him for a long time. And he said, I've got the money. And I said, for what? He said, for the movie. And I said, you're kidding. And he said, no, I've written, I've written the script. I'm going, to, I'm going to bike it over to you now. Now, at that point, being up for, for a director to be able to say they're going to bike a movie to the suburbs, from Soho to the suburbs of West London, I'm like, oh, he must have some money then if he can send a script by a bike. <laughs> uh, so he sent Lockstock over to me, and he said, look, I'm financed. We're going to go. I've got this direct, uh, I've got a producer called Matthew Vaughan. Um, he, he's, found the, he's found the finance for it, and we're shooting. Um, and he sent me this script, and... I, I, it was one of those scripts, it was a page turner. I, I started reading the script and the pages just went faster and faster and faster. And it was clearly evident to me at that point that, uh, that, that we had something very, very special on our hands. Um, that was before I even you know, got to grips with Guy and Tim Morris Jones' shooting star. Tim Morris Jones was the DP um, who, who arrived on Lockstock uh, and worked very, very closely alongside Guy. And what they developed with their sound design, um, which I'd like to talk about at length in a second. Um, but it became very clear to me that we had a, a serious script on our hands, and so that was that was my first movie. So now I'm 27. Uh, it was 1997, I was 27, and that's when I mixed my first movie. I'm going to go and get a power supply for this Mac. <laughs>